and here we are. Hopefully you can hear me. Always give me a little type. Give me a message that you can hear Mr. Seagull. I am excited we're here. Good morning everyone. Good morning. My name is, you, you know my name. Cacao, Mr. Seagull, but Bobby, you can call me Bobby. So I'm your maths teacher for Explore Learning and we are all fearless learners. So good morning. It's Wednesday. It is Wednesday. I'm, I'm going to check that you can hear me because I'd like to know that you can hear me. Yes, I think you can hear me. Yes. So, um, good morning to a few people. I'm going to say good morning to uh, Gabriel. Good morning to Alexander. Good morning to Isla. Good morning to Bo. Good morning to Sean. Good morning to Shivan. Good morning to Uma. Lots of people here. Good morning to Diego, Pixie, Poppy. You all, you're all here. I'll do a few more shout outs before we start. Thank you all. So, I am your online maths teacher with Explore Learning. And again, usually some of you would have been doing Joe Wicks, P with Joe this morning, and now you're here to exercise your mathematical mind. Isn't that true, Ellie and Maya and Ellis? To be honest, it's really warm this morning, isn't it? I put my jacket on and I started sweating. So make sure that the only thing you're sweating is your mind. You need to sweat your mind. You need to give that a workout. So, just in case it's your first time, I am a school maths teacher. I'm a presenter for the BBC TV series, that's a car, Monkman and Seagull's Genius Adventures, and I'll show you a trailer for next Monday's episode at nine o'clock. And I'm also the author of a book called The Life-Changing Magic of Numbers, available on all good bookshops and online retailers. And you can see it's my smiley face. It's about how numbers and maths changed my life. And through these lessons, I'm hopefully showing you how having a positive attitude can help you with your mathematical studies. Isn't that right, Bo, Isabella, Owen, and Dylan? So, with Explore Learning, we are at Explore at Home and we're keeping learning going through these difficult, challenging times. And you can always get, go to explorelearning.co.uk to book a free trial. Someone's asking me, it's not Christmas. Hold on, hold on, be patient, be calm. I'll explain everything on Monday, explain. So I'll explain, if you wait a few minutes, I'll explain what this is for. So it's not Christmas, I know it's not Christmas. It's too hot to be Christmas. <laughs> Unless you're in Australia. Um, which is true. So we love social media. We love social media. So at Twitter, we're Explore Tutors. At Instagram, we're Explore Learning underscore official. And myself, I'm at Bobby underscore Seagull. Bobby underscore Seagull. So if you have pictures, videos, homework you want to submit, uh, or show us how much fun you're having, please send it to us. Hashtag Maths with Bobby. Uh, and I love sharing these because it shows how much you're engaged. And again, if you're using Facebook, which most of you are, some of you in YouTube, Go to facebook.com forward slash Bobby Seagull. Give me a like or follow and you'll see all my cool, crazy mathematical stuff there. Okay, we're about to start our maths dance. Again, today is key stage two, ages seven to 11. Or if you're younger, you can join us or older. You're always welcome to join us. And today is going to be about this topic, that topic. I'll tell you more later. So the structure of the class, we know what it is. 30 minutes, let me get my clock. Let me get my clock. I love this clock. You know, the tick tock around the clock, tick tock. The class is gonna be 30 minutes. This clock doesn't say 30 minutes, but it's gonna to go to 10.30 roughly, roughly 10.30. Imagine the clock says 10.30. Uh, then a few minutes of um, thoughts of Mr. Seagull, positive ideas for you, Charlotte and Anna. Uh, and then um, some Q&A from parents. And then a few messages like my TV show, uh, my Facebook page, uh, a bit of my TEDx talk and the positive ideas there. Okay, okay. I think it's time for, you know what time it's for? Mm, 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 right? Mm, mm. It's that time. It's that time, isn't it? We know the time. We know the time. So Ritesha, I'm going to do a few more shout outs before we get going. Ritesha, here we're going to go. Andy, let's go. Okay, so people come to me and they say, Mr. Seagull, I haven't got a maths brain. And what do I say to them? Don't give me this, don't give me that. You definitely can do it. So what we do is this. Three, two, one, go. Yes, I can do maths. Yes, I can do maths. Yes, I can do maths. Give me that. Two more times, rewind. One, two, three, go. Yes, I can do maths. Yes, I can do maths. Yes, I can do maths. We'll do that one more time because I'm excited for today's class. One, two, three. Yes, I can do maths. Yes, I can do maths. And yes, I can do maths. We can all do maths. Are we excited? 
Are we excited? I think I'm excited. Isabella, Krish. Someone says that this motivates them. It does. It motivates me too. Okay, so let's get started. Let's get started. Lights. Lights are on. The lights are on. The cameras are rolling. And it's time for some mathematical action. Off we go. So, today's class is all about geometry. And I am wearing a Christmas shirt. And I'll show you a clip of when I first wore this back in Christmas. But geometry. There's a bit of a story behind it. So imagine, imagine this is a, this is my dictionary, but imagine this is a dusty old book, yeah? Imagine it's a dusty old book. And this book is 2,300 years old. 2,300 years old. And there's a man who lived in ancient civilization. I'm gonna move the board out of the way. And his name was Euclid. Euclid. Let's write that down. Euclid. I'll tell you why it's important. Euclid. His name was Euclid. And he wrote a book called The Elements. The Elements. And this was the first time, about 2,300 years ago, about two, so about two millennia ago, this is the first time that anyone had talked about geometry. He had a whole book where he explained what geometry was. For example, imagine I asked you, what is a line? What is a line? He came up with a definition. Before that, of course people knew what a line was. Imagine I said someone walking a line, they're not gonna do this other, they're not gonna go, they're not gonna do that. But Euclid explained a line is the shortest distance between two points. So obviously a line existed, but he helped define it. So this book here is called The Elements. And about 2,300 years ago, and I'll tell you what's amazing. His book was used in schools, adapt versions, for about 2,200 years. All the way from about 2,300 to 1,900. Talk about a best-selling book. You know, as much as I love my book, I don't think it will be around in 2,000 years. Whereas Euclid's book was used for nearly 2,000, more than 2,000 years. Isn't that amazing? So look it up on Google, The Elements, the first ever geometry book. And I'll tell you what geometry is. And again, a bit of recap for people that were here. So geometry comes from two words. And if you were here last lesson, you know the, you know the, the reason. So geometry comes from the word geo, geo, good bit of recap. It's always good to recap. Geo and uh, metria, metria. I'm going to show you why I've got this globe here. Geo and Metria. And Geo means Earth. This wonderful planet we have here. And Metria means measure. So Earth measure. So people use geometry to help us measure. So the Elements was the first ever textbook on geometry. About how to measure things. So there you go. That is a bit of history about why geometry is important. So. So. Geometry is all about. Shapes, sizes, positions, angles, and dimensions. And we'll look at that in the class today. So, you're wondering, why is Mr. Seagull wearing this crazy shirt? Does he know that the date is May the 20th? It's not December the 25th. And I'll show you the first time I wore this. Again, I love this shirt because it's a mathematical shirt. Let me bring you up, let me bring this shirt for you. Hold on. Let me show you this wonderful shirt. Here we go. Let's have a look. Let's have a look, boys and girls. So Friday we had a Christmas jumper day at school. Okay. But so uh, I've upped my game this year. <laughs> <laughs> you really <laughs> have. Bring, bring people out in a cold sweat at this time in the morning. Cold sweat, no, no, there'll be positive joy. Yeah. Positive joy. <laughs> it's right. just that pie sign. It's making okay, okay. flashbacks. <laughs> um, so you're going to set us some maths puzzle. There we go. So that was my mathematical shirt. And again, it's a geometry this week, so it's appropriate to wear that in all the classes. So now it's time for a game. It's time for a game. It's time for a game. So are you ready? So can you for this game, can you all go and get a piece of paper and a pencil? You definitely need it for this. You definitely need it for that. Go and get a pen and a pencil or a piece of paper. Do that for me. You need both. Get a pencil and a piece of paper. It's time for... Game time! Game time early on. Game time early on. Are you ready? Okay, so I'm going to get into, you know this game here? We're going to get an artist. 
Bobby the mathematician is going to disappear. So we're going to get an artist. So what do artists have? Artists have, uh, they wear an apron, don't they? An apron? Uh, they wear an apron. Let's have a look. Apron here. Uh, I'm going to get this apron on. Come on, get your paper. Get ready. Get ready for this game. Got an apron here. I'm going to wrap it around. Hold on. I know this. And please don't tell me this is a chef's apron. I know that. I haven't got an art apron. Come on, give me some, give me some leeway. Artists also, what do they do? They're quite arty. They wear, they wear scarves, don't they? You know, like fashionable. Fashionable. So I'm an artist. Hello. Wait, 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 wait. Look at this. I've got, color, I've got lots of colors here. Got my paintbrush. Bonjour. Welcome. Bienvenue. Ah, uh, Monsieur Seagulls. Mathematical art class. I am your French mathematician today. Welcome. Bienvenue. Um, I will not continue with my French accent because I'm not very good at it. But we are going to play a game called Mathematical Art. Mathematical Art. Are you ready? So get some paper. Come on, quick, quick. Run and get something. Run and get something. A few of you say you haven't got paper. You need to get some. So I've got my brushes. I've got my colouring pens. I've got my chalks. All ready. Are you ready for... I know, my, I know my apron's inside out. I know. You're telling me here on Facebook. It's because I haven't got any other apron. Come on, artists, we're flexible. Okay, so here's the task. I'm going to describe three shapes for you. I'll only describe it once. Only once. No, I might do it twice. I'm generous. I'm a generous guy. I'm a generous artist. And you have to draw the shape. So you need... This game is called Mathematical Art Class. Mathematical... Wait, M A C. Welcome to Mathematical Art Class. Come on, do that for me. It's all shapes. Mathematical Art Class. Welcome to Mathematical Art Class. Did you get that? M-A-C. So this is the M-A-C. Welcome to Mathematical Art Class. Are you ready? So you should all have your papers. So here's the first shape. Here is the first shape. Are you ready? So the first shape is... Uh, I'm, I'm, no clarification. You're going to be typing messages in for me. You're going to just have to listen to my instructions. I'm not reading any of your messages till we get to the end of this. Okay, the first one is this. I want you to draw a square. Draw a square. We got that? D'accord? Ça va? So draw a square. Then, draw another square inside that square. So what you've done for me is, you've drawn a square, Naveen, and then you've drawn another square inside. That's all I'm saying right now. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. That is number one. So number one. You've drawn a square and a square inside. Okay. Are you ready for number two? We're doing three of these. Because mathematical art class has three letters, we've got to do three things. The second one, I'm going to give you a bit of help. So remember, a hexagon has six sides. Hex, six. I want you to draw a hexagon firstly. Draw a hexagon. Draw a hexagon. Mathematical art class. You done that? Draw the hexagon for me? Come on. Come on, get in your paper. Draw it for me. Bonjour. Uh, je suis un artiste français. I'm a French artist. So the you draw the hexagon, okay? Six-sided shape, okay? And now I want you to draw two lines going through the hexagon. I want you to draw two lines going through the hexagon. So you've got a hexagon and two lines going through it. That's question number two. Good. Trin's done it. Okay, time for question number three in mathematical art class. Question number three. Okay, you ready? Draw a circle. Draw a circle for me. Got the circle? Yeah? I'll tell you a fun fact about a circle in a second. In a second. So a circle. And then the third one, part of this instruction. Now I want you to draw five lines. Connected to the circle. I want you to draw five lines. I want you to draw five lines. Come on. Draw for me. I'm telling you anymore. I'm not. I told you, mathematical art class. I don't look at your, your comments. You just have to listen to my instructions. Draw a circle and five lines. 
Come on, I'll give you, I'm gonna give you five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. And that's it, pens down, pens down. That is, now we're gonna go through the answers for mathematical art class. The N, N, oh my God, mathematical art class. It's nearly at YMCA. Y M A C. Okay, so here are the answers. Mathematical. So the first one was this. Let's have a look. That was the first one. Okay, okay. And the second one is this. You're all going mad, aren't you now? And the third one was this. How many lines did I say? I said five lines. Ah, you're all getting annoyed at me. You're like, Mr. Seagull, you tricked us. I didn't trick you. You're thinking, what's he done here? Done a square with another square inside. I've done a hexagon, six sides, one, two, three, four, five, six, with two lines. And now, I've done a circle with one, two, three, four, five lines connected. I didn't mislead you, did I? Okay, someone tell me in the chat box, what do you think has gone wrong? Because I've, I've done what I said, a square with a small square inside, a hexagon with two lines, and I've also done a circle with five lines. Tell me, someone, what's gone wrong? What's gone wrong in the mathematical art class? Because obviously, I'm not, I'm not an evil maths teacher, am I? I'm a nice guy, I'm a nice teacher. But something's gone wrong. What's gone wrong? Someone tell me what you think has gone wrong. So remember, my instructions were a square with a small square inside, a hexagon with two lines, and a circle with five lines. What's gone wrong here? Someone's saying I tricked you. So someone's, John Jeffrey says, there is more than one answer. Ah, Erico's on the money. Erico says, Erica? Oh, where's it? Erico, if I can give some money to Erico. Do I have some money for Erico? Erica, here's, here's your five pound, virtual five pound, there you go. And Antia, you can get some of that. That's yours, that's yours, well done. Um, <laughs> virtual money. So what Erico said was, I didn't trick you, I wasn't being a meanie. I didn't tell you the instructions clearly. And I think in maths, you have to be really precise, especially geometry, about the language you use because your description has to be as accurate as possible so someone else could re replicate it. So, imagine this one here. I could have said, draw a square, maybe four centimeters each side, four centimeters, and again, this is big, but a small one. And then inside the bottom left-hand corner, draw a square that's connected to the edge and that's about a quarter of the square. And then most of you would have probably drawn that. Now Olivia says they're not proper shapes on question number two. So what I should have said to you was, don't draw a regular hexagon. So you know this shape, the one that you see in B's honeycomb, that's a regular hexagon. But this is a irregular hexagon because a regular hexagon means the shape has the same sides and angles. The same sides, all the sides are the same length and all the angles are the same. This is not, this is an irregular one. And obviously I need to give you detailed instructions on how to draw that. And I'll come back to these two lines in a second. Actually, I'll come back to it now. So these two lines, there's a word in mass. It's a complicated word beginning with P. There's two words beginning with P. What, what do you describe two lines that are at 90 degrees to each other? <laughs> there we go. Does anyone know the word? Two lines at 90 degrees. So it's an irregular one. What are the two lines? 90 degrees. Per, per, it's called PE. It's like hangman we're playing, hangman. P E R. Come on. P E R. P E R P. Per, 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 P E R P E M. Not parallel. Per pen, per pen, per pen. Come on. Perpendicular. Okay. So I could have said to you, once I've described this irregular hexagon, to draw, Lily, well done, to draw two perpendicular lines. Perpendicular means they're 90 degrees to each other. And another word similar that's used in maths 
sounds similar, but it's not. It's parallel. Parallel. So I could have used the word parallel as well. Parallel are lines that are opposite each other, but they never meet. So two lines, straight lines, that head off, but never meet. Some people will say parallel lines are the saddest story in all time. Because they're two lines going in the same direction, but they never meet. How sad is that? It's a sad story. The sad story of the word parallel. So, parallel and perpendicular. And the last one, I was very mean. I should have said to you the angles. I could have said, draw a circle with maybe a radius of two centimeters, and then draw a line that's coming off the bottom that's 45 degrees from the horizontal. And another one that's symmetrical to that. Then between it, draw a straight line two centimeters. Then draw another line that's 45 degrees from the horizontal. So the, do you get the sense here what I'm doing? It's all about being precise with your language because maths is a language. So before we conclude the mathematical art class and move on to the next part of the lesson, you need to, uh, if you can, do a homework challenge for me. Maybe set it for someone in your family or send it to us on Twitter at Bobby underscore Seagull or on my Facebook page. Just send me a message with that on. Create your own description and get me to try and draw it. So send me your description. So your description could be, Mr. Seagull, for your mathematical art class, can you draw something that is uh, a rectangle with a circle inside and a small circle and a triangle on top? Give me a description, send it across to me, okay? Good, good. Okay, we're gonna enter a new world. We're gonna enter a new world. We're gonna enter a new world. So say goodbye to mathematical art class. Au revoir, au revoir, au revoir. We're going to say bye. Mathematical art class. Goodbye. And we're going to get Miss Alex. Do you want to, I can't wear my jacket. It's far too hot. It's very, very hot. Ooh, I am baking. I'm baking. And I normally am very smartly dressed, but it's incredibly hot. And this is a mathematical t shirt. Okay, so currently, the pictures that we've all drawn, the pictures we've drawn, you'll notice are flat shapes. A flat shapes. And what's the word for a flat shape? A flat shape. Goodbye, Mac. Goodbye, Mac. What's the word for a flat shape? We know this word. What's the word? Anyone got that in? So a flat shape. A few of you got in the chat box. A flat shape is called a 2D shape. Two-dimensional. Because we can draw that. But now we're going to enter. We're going to leave. We're going to leave the two-dimensional world. We're going to enter the three-dimensional world. We're going to enter the, th the real world. So we're going to enter the three-dimensional world. So three dimensions. So a flat object, like a square. Can you write for me a few examples of three dimensional objects? Come on, chuck a few in for me. Chuck a few in. Put in a few three dimensional objects for me. Chuck in a few three dimensional objects. Do that for me. Have a go, have a go. So what have we got? We've got cube. I can see someone saying cube. I think you can see cube. Okay, good. So we've got cube as a three-dimensional object. What else do we have? Give me some more. Cube, something very similar to a cube. What do we have similar to a cube? We've got a cylinder, well done. A cylinder. And if you were here on Monday, I was selling lots of these items. Today there's no sale, I'm out, I'm out of stuff. Uh, we've got uh, Emily and Helen saying sphere, good, like a football. No sales today, sales are all, I'm all out. I'm all out of stock. Oh, Lily says triangular prism. I like that, Lily. Triangular prism. Triangular prism. Any more, any more. There's lots of different shapes. So we've got uh, Nadine says a cube triangular based pyramid. A triangular based pyramid, yeah. So we've got pyramids. We've got, oh, if I can spell correctly, pyramids. There's a couple. There's a triangle based pyramid, which is normally called a tetrahedron. A pyramid, so we've got a triangle based and a square base. So I put triangle, tri and square. Any other shapes? The thing is, there are lots of these shapes. There's just a few of them today. Any more shapes we have? Um, Ellie says a prism. A prism is a shape that has the same front and a depth throughout. Well done. Octagonal prism, you can have that. Lots of lots of brilliant ideas. Cuboid. Well done to, who's this cuboid? Isla, well done, we've got a cuboid. So you can see 
there are lots, there are many, many different 3D shapes. Many 3D shapes. And often it's about how do we describe it? Let's look at some, let me see if I can find an object. Ah, here we go. So this is a magical box. It's not really magic, I'm sorry, this is not really magic. This is just a standard box. It's a cuboid. Uh, is it Oma, Oma Labake? Oma Labake says this is a, a cuboid. So this cuboid here, we're gonna describe it. We're gonna describe it. So we're gonna go to a cuboid. We're gonna get some language in today, language. So we've got this cuboid here. So on this cuboid, can you see the, the sides? There's a word for that, it's called the face, they're called faces. Face. So they call the face, the faces. And then what else do we have? We have these bits. Can you see that go along the, the between the points? They're called the edges. So you call the edges as well. The edges. And then, you know the corners? Does anyone know the fancy word beginning with a V? What the corners represent? What do the corners mean? A fancy word of maths. You can in the real world say this has so many corners, but what's the mathematical word? Corners. Ooh, we've got an interesting bit of chat. I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna come back to this. I've got an interesting bit of chat coming in the box. Corners, the word is ver oh well done, John Jeffries. It's vertices. Vertices. A singular is vertex. Vertex. But we have, we've got plural here. So someone in the chat box says there's no such thing as four dimensions. Ooh, I'll, I'll tell you something, what four dimensions are. So four dimensions do exist, and I'll tell you what four dimensions are. So imagine I say to you, um, on Christmas day, meet me outside the post office. I don't know why, I don't know why, pick up message. So do you know what three dimensions are? I'll tell you how a, a direction. Three dimensions will tell us where in the world exactly you are. But you know what the fourth dimension is? What if I turn up at 12 o'clock and you turn up at three o'clock? I'll say, I turned up at 12, you weren't there, you weren't there, I was there. And you're like, I didn't tell you what time. Time is considered the fourth dimension, time. So the three dimensions will tell you exactly where you are. And the fourth dimension is the time. And once you've got that, you can meet anyone in theory, anywhere in the universe, obviously. You probably need a very fast spacecraft, but with four dimensions, it is uh, a location, exactly, so it's a exact point, and then a time. There you go, four dimensions do exist. You learned that with Mr. Seagull today. Okay, let's go back to the, go back to my magical box, my magical cuboid, okay. So on this cuboid, how many faces are there? Faces, so we count to look, one at the front, same one at the back, there's two, one at the top, one at the bottom, four, one on this side, and one on that side. So there are six faces. Six here, we put six there for a cuboid. How many edges? I'm about to sneeze. Wait, 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 no, no. Do you always get that feeling when you're about to sneeze? I think it's gone, it's a chalk. Okay, how many edges? So look, there's one there, two there, three there, four there. Can you see that? There's four edges. And then there's four there. Uh, there are four at the back, which are the same. So there's four, eight, and then there's four more at the top, that's 12, and four at the bottom, that's 16. I think that's correct, isn't it? One, two, three, four at the top. Then there's four at the bottom, which are exactly the same, so there's eight. Then there's, oh, actually, no, no. So what, four? Oh, and there's two more there, two more there. There's 12, there's 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Made a mistake myself. 12 edges, 12 edges. And that relates to one of our questions later from parents. Okay, mistakes. So I nearly made a mistake. Okay, so we've got four, 12 edges and vertices are the corners. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight vertices. So you can use math to describe a cuboid. It has six, six faces. I've gone completely mad today. One, two, three, four, six. It is six, God, thank you. I was, getting, I was panicking there, I was panicking. So we've got six. Um, faces. So someone's saying, I'm not sure what's going on. We're describing a shape, a, a cuboid. It's got six faces. It has 12 edges. 
and it has eight corners, vertices. So what I want you to do is, as a task, because we're getting, we're getting close to the end of the lesson. So who likes chocolate here? Who likes chocolate? I like chocolate. Can you name for me a mathematical chocolate that looks like a triangular prism? Can you name one for me? Anyone? I'm about to show you. A mathematical chocolate, a mathematical chocolate. Here we are, here we go. Here we go. A mathematical chocolate. It is a Toblerone. So what we're doing now is we're describing shapes using maths. So I want you in the chat box to type for me in a Toblerone box, in the box, how many faces are there? Imagine it was a 3D object. How many edges are there? And how many vertices are there? So how, type this for me. So in a Toblerone box. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna count it myself. So I'm gonna do the faces first. Faces to this. Write it if you can. One triangle, two triangle, the sides. So there's two there. Then there's one, two, three. So there's five. That's what you should be getting. Five faces. Now edges, let's count the edges. So one edge at the top, one, two more at the bottom, so there's three. Then there's three on one side, then three on the other side. So edges actually, if you count it, let's say, look, there's one at the top. You know, imagine it's a holding a, imagine you're holding a 3D prism. There's one edge at the top, two at the bottom, that's three. Then each of the two faces, the two triangle bits there, there's a three, six, there's nine. I'm getting nine edges. And that's something bad, I'm getting nine edges. And then vertices, how many edges? How many corners are there? One, two, three, four, five, six. Well done, John Jeffries. So that's for a triangular based prism. And it's a prism because if you look at it from one direction, it's the same length. It's the same length. So well done, well done. So I think you can practice with other shapes. Look at a cube, look at a pyramid, for example. We could look at a square based pyramid. We could look at a triangular based pyramid. But you can practice this and think about vertices. So, if you come back on Friday, where we're going to progress with the lesson, let's bring it back to the main scene. I'll tell you where we're going to, I'll tell you where we're going to progress. We're going to progress by, we're going to look at a formula that can help us understand this. And if you want to do some research, look this up. It's called Euler. We're moving on to some interesting maths. Look up this man, Euler, and look up, if you look up Euler, vertices, edges, faces, You'll find it out, Euler. I know it looks like Euler, but he's a Swiss mathematician, Euler. And we'll look at what he did. So we're gonna do that on, we're gonna do that on the Friday. On the Friday. So, where are we going on to next? So we have, we have, I think we've come to the conclusion. So let me, let me have a look at what we've done today. From your thoughts, Mr. Seagull. So we've looked at, remember the name of the book? Euclid's Elements. It's called The Elements. And Euclid's book, really old, dusty book, about 2000, um, 300 years ago, which is the first book all about geometry. Then we looked at the importance of using the correct language. For example, I, I was a bit of a meanie. I made you draw a regular hexagon with two lines, but I need to give you the clear and precise instructions. So we have, remember, regular or irregular shapes. Regular ones have the same angle and same size. Irregular ones need a bit more description. And also then, we need to know whether parallel lines or perpendicular lines. So be clear in your description. Then we looked onto the three, you know, we did our mathematical art class. We did that. And then we looked at 3D shapes in the real world and how we can describe them using faces, edges, and vertices. So you should be feeling confident. So on Friday's class, we're going to look at something called Euler's formula. And that's a cool mathematical thing. And also, who likes spiders? I don't like spiders, I like spiders. I'm gonna tell you a story about geometry. You know coordinate geometry, you know, has anyone seen? I'm sure you've seen this. You know grids in mathematics, grids. Let's have a look. Coordinate grids. We've all seen the coordinate grid, you know, plotting stuff on a coordinate grid. I'm gonna tell you how spiders played a big part in coordinate geometry. There you go, lots of exciting. So come back on Friday, it's gonna get more advanced, but you can always recap and watch the video videos again. Okay, so um, today's thoughts of Mr. Seagull are gonna be related to a question. So a question from a parent was, 
My child is getting nervous about getting questions wrong in maths. How can I encourage them to have a go? So my child is getting nervous about getting um, questions wrong. How can I encourage them to have a go? And I'll tell you what is really important. This. You know, when I was doing the vertices or edges, I made a little mistake, didn't I? I made a little mistake and I went back and recalculated. And I think it's not a problem. I'm going to go and play you a clip for my TEDx talk. And I'm going to show you what is relevant to that. So I'm going to show you. So again, if you go to, I'm going to show you the clip in a second. Here we are. So if you go to YouTube, type in, it's called the magic of numbers, why everyone should love maths. And again, if you've got 16 minutes spare, four squared, go and watch this because it shows you why, how much I love maths. So let me play you this clip. I have similar conversations at school. At parents' evening, there was a dad looking at the results of his 11-year-old daughter, Emily. Emily didn't have the best of starts to school maths. So dad said, don't worry, Emily, I didn't have a maths brain and maybe you don't either. At this point, I wanted to have a proper go at the dad, but I rebutted him politely. Dad, there's no such thing as a maths brain that you either can or can't do maths. Do you remember when Emily was born? Oh, yes, 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 I remember. Emily's obviously looking a bit embarrassed now. When Emily was born, and at the hospital, there would have been a nurse with a clipboard checking vitals. So Emily's got two legs, two arms, two eyes, two ears. But unfortunately, Dad, Emily does not appear to have a maths brain. <laughs> that last bit didn't happen, did it, Dad? So I'm going to pause it there. I'm going to pause that there. So if you want to see more of this talk, again, if you go to my Facebook page, I'll li I do link it up there. But if you go to YouTube, it's uh, Bobby Seagull TED Talk. And the reason I've got it up there is because, is because people often think that they can't do maths. And again, the question was, someone gets nervous about making mistakes. With maths though, we don't have a maths brain. We're not born with a maths brain. We work hard at it and then we become good at the subject. And to become good at something, you do need to make mistakes. Because if you're doing something and you're getting it correct all the time, it's probably too easy. So you need to progress and stretch yourself. So actually, it's okay to make mistakes. And maths brain, it doesn't exist. It's about actually putting in the work, putting in the practice. So again, if you go to uh, my Facebook page, do give me a follow or a like. So it's Facebook, I'll type it in for you. Uh, Facebook.com um, forward slash Bobby Seagull. And I, and I post lots of maths content. Oop, as long as I can get my name correct. So I post lots of maths content um, uh, about how maths can help you in everyday life. And again, what I think with Explore Learning, why I love them, is they're all about being a fearless learner. Being a fearless learner. Because in maths, it's about making mistakes and be willing to say, actually, you know, I made a mistake, but, um, but I'm happy to keep trying. So be willing to make mistakes. So go to that page, give it a like, follow, and you can find information, my TED Talk, everything there. But there you go. Okay. So what other things do we have? So that's a thank you for your thank you for your question. What other things do we have? Um, on Saturday, so again, if you like if you like my questions, if you like my my riddles and puzzles, uh, I do a family quiz every Saturday at six o'clock. So at six p.m., um, it's called Quiz for NHS. And again, there's details on my Facebook if you give it a follow. Um, we have a music round, a charades round where I act, and you know I like acting, mathematical art class. You see that sort of stuff, but with acting as well. Um, we do a primary school round, which you, if you're in primary school, you should definitely be able to help. So come along to that every Saturday at six o'clock. And then just as a separate incident, on Wednesdays at eight o'clock, I do a football quiz, but that's only for football fans. So, but the Saturday one is really great. Mathematical art class, I love that. I love the mathematical art class. Uh, and I want to show you my science and history program, my science and history program. So it was on a Monday night. BBC Two, three episodes where my friend and I went round in a car exploring Britain's science and history from 1750 to 1900. Honestly, you love the show. You love the show. And again, on my Facebook page, I post all the information about it. I'm going to show you a trailer for episode number two. So episode number two. Someone saying they I'll come back to it. Someone saying they thought the quiz was at five o'clock. I've changed the time to six. I've changed it to six o'clock because six o'clock is a bit better for families. So it is a new time. Okay, let me show you. Uh, this 
new trailer. Let me show you this new trailer. Hold on, let's get it up. Okay, here you go. So this is for episode number two. As the Industrial Revolution gathers pace, Britain takes to the rails. Stevenson's rocket returns to Rain Hill. Yeah. The world's biggest and most luxurious ocean liner affords us the promise of global travel. Ultimately, the world underwent what's now described as the first period of globalization. And Mugman and Seagull get fired up by the achievements of one of the world's greatest scientists. So would you say Humphrey Davis is almost like the Ed Sheeran of science? Who's that show? Next time. There you go. So that is coming out on... That's coming out. Where are we going? Uh, let's go back to Calvin. So that's coming, I'm going to put my board back. So that's coming out uh, mon ooh. Monday at uh, 9 o'clock is episode 2. And if you missed it, go to BBC iPlayer uh, and you'll find it there. But again, my Facebook page has those details. So that's come to the end of the geometry lesson. End of the geometry lesson. Um, I think it's time to move back to the main scene. Why not quick messages? Yes, the, the, the scientist I met didn't know Ed Sheeran and find out on Monday what I was talking about, but you can find the old episode on iPlayer. So again, um, I love these lessons with you. Explore at home, explore learning. Because explore learning, their ideas are exactly the same as mine because they believe that we can be fearless learners. And that's about making mistakes, but saying, I'm not afraid, I'll make mistakes, but I know that making mistakes are part of the journey of improving it. And that is what it's all about. Can you keep getting better a bit by bit? And if you do that, you know that you're heading in the right direction. You're heading in the right direction. So if you want more information on free file, go to explorelearning.co.uk. And again, tweet us. Let us know at Explore what you think of maths and what you think of the sessions. At Explore Tutors on Twitter, Explore Learning underscore official on Instagram. And then myself, I'm at Bobby Seagull. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram. I'm on TikTok, TikTok, I'm on TikTok, and obviously I'm on Facebook, and I've got a YouTube channel as well, Bobby Siegel YouTube. But please share us, Maths with Bobby, we love being here. So our next class is on Friday, more geometry. And then back next week, we're back, we're still here, we're still here. We're doing problem solving, and I was discussing with Explore what the lesson's going to be about. It's going to be amazing, it's going to be code breaking. We're going to go to World War II, Bletchley Park. And we're going to imagine that you're working as a spy code cracker. And every day, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, will get more challenging. So make sure you're back next week for code cracking and Bletchley Park. You are going to be my mathematical spies. Okay, there we go. Thank you. I'm going to give her a few goodbyes. So thank you so much, uh, Emily. Um, and why do you not know Ed Sheeran? You should know Ed Sheeran. Mr. Seagull likes Ed Sheeran. Thank you, Holly. Uh, thank you, Gabriel. Thank you, Alexander. Uh, thank you, Bo. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Shivan. Um, uh, thank you, was it Jaithra? Uh, thank you all so much. Thank you, um, Victoria and Charlotte, for coming along to my class. You've all been brilliant. Um, thank you so much. So, you've been fabulous. I've been Mr. Bobby Seagull. I've had a great lesson. I've had lots of fun. Um, and we are with Explore Learning, and we are fearless learners. And you know what fearless learners do, Louis? Yasmin, what are we going to do? We're going to do our maths wrap. There we go. Arms together. We'll do it three times. Three, two, one, go. Yes, I can do maths. Yes, I can do maths. Yes, I can do maths. Come on, Charlotte and Victoria. Come on, Ellie. Let's do it again. Three, two, one, go. Yes, I can do maths. Yes, I can do maths. Yes, I can do maths. The last time. I'm getting some great messages. I do the maths, best maths. Thank you, Emily. Uh, and thank you, Irene. Last time. Here we go. Let's go. Three, two, one. Yes, I can do maths. Yes, I can do maths. Yes, I can do maths. But I can't sing. <laughs> but I can rap. Okay, thank you all. Thank you, Bo. Thank you, Isabella. Thank you, Gabriel. Thank you, Naman. Thank you all so much. Uh, don't forget to follow me on Facebook. Like me on Facebook. Facebook.com forward slash Bobby Seagull. Head there. Head there. Um, and I'll see you all, um, hopefully on Friday. Uh, otherwise, I will see you. When will I see you next? I'll see you on uh, next week where we do problem solving. Okay, see you all very soon. Bye, Charlotte. Bye, Victoria. Ta-da. Goodbye.